Welcome to a slightly different video format. Today, myself and nine other artists are participating in a YouTube hop. We will be answering 10 arty questions and you can see the entire list of participants down there below in the description box. Make sure you go check them out. Before we jump into those 10 arty questions, let me do a quick introduction as to who I am in case you are new around here. Hi there, I'm Stacy, the encaustic mixed media artist behind Studio Stacy. Encaustic literally means to burn in. So I paint with beeswax and a torch, and because it's mixed media, pretty much anything else I can get my hands on. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Consider subscribing and joining this artsy community. Don't forget, hit that thumbs up button, which helps me get introduced to more like-minded artsy folks like yourself. All right, now let's get into those juicy artsy questions. Question number one, what in your art career has brought you the most joy? Well, I couldn't just pick one thing. So two things have brought me the most joy. First, seeing other people's reactions to my paintings, especially in person at art shows. I really enjoy seeing how others interpret a painting. And I especially love it when people, a painting puts somebody in that particular place or brings out a certain emotion and they share that with me. I, I truly love connecting with other people through my art. And that brings me to the a second thing that brings me the most joy in this art career, and that is connecting with other like-minded creatives. I truly believe that everybody has a creative spirit and is a creative, and I really like encouraging other people to create art and paint and or, you know, just do their own creative thing. When I started this channel, I really just wanted to share my joy for creating with this fantastic medium and caustic. However, what I did not expect was the connections I would make with other makers and artists. And I just really feel like I have friends all over the world now due to this channel. Question number two, if you could only pick five art supplies, what would they be? Now, I took a bit of a liberty with this question, and I'm assuming I get to have my torch and my griddle and a wood cradled panel because uh, you kind of need those things to paint with encaustic. Oh, and a hake natural bristle brush. Without those, I can't paint encaustic. So I have to have those four basic supplies. So not counting those four, here would be my top five which by the way was extremely hard for me to narrow down as a uh, mixed media artist i tend to collect all of the art supplies but since i had to choose here's the list number one has to be encaustic medium i use this as a base layer in most of the paintings and i also use it to thin out my paint and make it more translucent i don't think there's a painting out there that I haven't used encaustic medium on. Second item would be Neo Color Crayons. These are one of my favorite mixed media um, tools, mixed media supplies, I should say, to use with encaustic. I use them a lot as a base layer, but the nice thing about these is you can also use them on top of a painting to add tiny little details in, especially if you have a tiny detailed brush, but you could actually just draw right on the painting as well. So Neo Color Crayons, supply number two. Supply number three has to be some encaustic paint because, well, you can't paint an encaustic painting without some encaustic paint. Now I did narrow this down to a, a few different colors, so I'm gonna show you those colors now. First up would be the basic color of white because, well, you can't make white with any other color. I need white. 
quinacridone magenta this is my all-time favorite pinky red color Payne's gray which you see right here in this painting one of my favorite blues bismuth orange which is this color right in here not the yellow but the orangey color this green right here is pistachio green and I think I use this green in 99% of my paintings and last but not least is cadmium yellow supply number four would have to be this loop tool it's meant for pottery but I use it uh, to scrape back layers to reveal layers underneath and also to um, take and um, scrape back any mistakes anything that I might not decide I want there for an encaustic artist this loop tool is much like an eraser and so I think I use this tool in almost every single one of my paintings as well and the final supply I debated between my encaustic writer which allows me to make little fine fine lines which I've used a lot um, recently probably in the last couple years I've used it a lot in different paintings however I decided on the oil stick and these I use typically as one of the last layers in a painting to rub down into little tiny nooks and crevices and it just pops out any details any more texture it just kind of makes the painting I would say pop a bit it's a nice final touch question number three what is your go-to color palette favorite color family color and to be honest I don't have one I don't think I have one I don't have like a go-to like oh you know maybe I'm stuck I need to use this color or this color family I just paint <laughs> and I love color I really really truly love color so um, yeah let me show you all my colors actually all right here you go <laughs> here are all of the colors well I don't even know if these are all of them the colors of paint that I have these are all swatched out these are the cool colors and here's all the warm colors lots of colors so now having said that I do like to once I kind of get my colors picked out for a particular painting I like to mix them to make other colors so in each painting there may be only four or five like set colors but then I mix those up to make new colors or to make grays and I think that really adds a lot of depth to the painting so I do do that question number four how do you feel about digital kits freebies or the likes um, to be honest with you I don't use them um, I don't have any problem with artists that do use them I think that there's a billion artists out there that make some beautiful original artwork out of digital kits and freebies I just personally don't use them a lot and I tend to like to use my own collage materials and my own photographs for reference it just it to me it makes the painting more personal to me however I have no issues with people using them I just don't question number five we're almost halfway there what motivates you to create art or what is the why behind your art I have three very strong core values kindness compassion and empathy I also love 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 nature and getting outside so these are the reasons that motivate me and the reasons why behind most of my art if not all of my art I create to connect with others and inspire others I have never been good with words in fact this these questions have taken me about 12 different takes so far to properly express myself so I paint and that's how I express myself 
the series that I'm currently working on, which you've seen a lot in the backgrounds because I have them hanging all over the studio, has a much deeper meaning than the trees in the paintings and then just a beautiful painting. And that is, I have an autoimmune blood syndrome that has attacked my eyes, my hands, and my heart. So in these paintings, I have kind of hidden heart and hand veins. And that is to um, kind of convey the kindness, compassion, and empathy that I would hope other people could extend to others. Um, when you look at me, I look perfectly normal, like as if nothing is wrong. However, because my body doesn't know what to do when it gets sick and it just goes crazy and attacks things it shouldn't be attacking, I often wear a mask, I stay away from very crowded outdoor events, and we also stay away from indoor activities. And a lot of people have questioned, you know, that we, do we really need to be doing this? I've gotten looks for wearing masks. Some of you already know this whole story, so hopefully you're sticking with me, but at any rate, that's what this series is about and why these veins are in there. It's expressing reaching out, getting to know somebody on a deeper level, having a more understanding and empathy towards them. And even if you don't get to know that person, just try to have compassion because you never know what somebody else is going through. Question number six, what is your favorite substrate to work on and why? This for me is a pretty easy question because encaustic requires a porous surface. It also requires a rigid surface or for your artwork to be mounted then onto a rigid surface. And that is because the wax needs something to seep into. And once it's into that surface, if it has any flex to it, it could possibly crack. So for me, it's wood cradle panels. It's 99% of the time what I paint on. And my husband and I actually make all of the panels that I paint on. And that's just because, like I said earlier, I, there's something to be said for me personally, knowing that I'm creating a piece, hand making something from the very beginning to the very end. Something about knowing that my hands have touched almost every single aspect of that artwork just brings me joy. Question number seven. When you work in layers, what is your favorite layer? Oh boy, this was a hard one. Um, I lose count of how many layers are in each one of these paintings. So many layers, but at any rate, I think if I had to choose, it would be the very first layer. The layer kind of where you're just starting the painting out the, you, there's excitement because you're not sure where it's going and it's just full of possibilities yeah layer number one has to be my favorite and working in layers is one of my favorite things about encaustic paint you can make the paint very opaque or extremely translucent and so and you can also scrape back remember i mentioned that scraping tool so you can reveal layers underneath. The very, very, very first layer that you ever put down on a painting can peek through even if you have 30 layers on top of that. That's just one of my favorite things about encaustic. Question number eight, we're almost there. Does where you live and or where you grew up influence your art? For me, that is a resounding yes. One of my very, very, very favorite paintings that I ever painted was called The Road Home. And it was based back when we lived in Ohio on our road that we actually lived on, hence The Road Home. It was a very snowy drive home. And um, as you know, if you've been around a little while, I love, love, love the snow. And I just had to capture that moment. So um, yeah, it was just a majestic moment and I had to capture it. So a resounding yes to where you live and or grew up influence your art. The other thing is when we first moved here to West Virginia, I painted an entire series, a hundred day project on West Virginia trees. 
I took a deep dive into it because we bought seven acres kind of in the middle of the forest, in the woods. It's just beautiful here. And I was completely intrigued by all of the trees. In fact, I want to do a larger painting on these trees going even a little bit deeper dive into some specific trees and um, yeah, coming in the future. So stay tuned for that. But yes, where I live definitely influences my art. Question number nine, what is your favorite journal to work in? So I don't know if you see all those back there. I have a whole stack of journals, more over here. So you would think I would have a favorite one. However, I struggle to actually get into them. I have so many journals, handmade journals, store-bought journals. I have a habit of collecting journals and then not doing anything with them. So um, I don't have a favorite one because I don't work in them. <laughs> so as a matter of fact, if any of you have any tips or tricks on how you keep a sketchbook practice or a journal practice, I would love to know because I would really, really, really like to have one. I keep saying I'm going to, and then I just don't. So yeah, let me know down there below in the comments how you keep a sketchbook slash a journal practice. I would love to know what's working for you. And while you're down there, make sure you check out the description and check out those other nine other artists that are participating in this hop. Final question coming up. Question number 10. What is your biggest struggle as an artist and how did you overcome it? Well, I was going to initially say finding time to play. But the more I thought about it, you know, back to that whole sketchbook journal question, the more I thought about it, I think really my biggest struggle is getting out of my head. So uh, let me explain this a little further here. I tend to be my own worst enemy and let negative comments kind of get in my head and I don't get out of my own way. I don't let those kind of just roll off my back. And mainly those negative comments have been based not around my art, but around my art career and about making this my career. So I feel like when I get into the studio, I need to create finished artwork and then put a price tag on that and then sell that. So I am not making time to play because I'm too much in my head and I'm too busy worrying about those negative comments. You know, one comment about your career your art career and it takes away all of those paintings you've ever sold all of those you know followers that you have all of the lovely comments you've gotten all of your newsletter subscribers that you've accumulated over the years it just somehow diminishes all of that for me and i think that okay i'm in here i need to paint make a painting so i can sell that painting so then i can prove to whoever the person made that comment that i'm worth whatever it is so yeah, that's my biggest struggle. So as you can probably tell, I am still struggling with this, still struggling getting over those comments. However, what I do think helps is knowing my own self-worth, having thick skin, and also knowing that life is way too short to worry about what other people think. And I truly believe that based on my own life experiences, life is too short you got to follow your dreams. So with that, I thought I would leave you with one of my favorite quotes from Georgia O'Keeffe. And that is, I've been absolutely terrified every single moment of my life, but I've never let it keep me from doing the things I want to do. I paraphrase that slightly, so I'll stick the exact quote in here. Yeah, it's just got to leave you with that. Remember, follow your dreams, paint your paintings, play, get creative, do your thing. Thanks so very much for following along and watching. Your next stop on this hop is Ricky from Ricky Tiki Tavy. So go check that person out. I Go check out all of the participants. All, like I said, are all going to be down there in the description below this video. 
it'd be, I think, fun and interesting to see what everybody has and how everybody answers these questions. And for that matter, if you would like to participate, leave me a comment if you have a favorite question and uh, yeah, answer that for me. I would love to know. Like I said, I love connecting with all of you. So let me know what your favorite question was and or if you have any questions for me. But at any rate, I'm going to let you go here. Thanks again. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, you know, all the good stuff. Bye for now.